What is biologically complete compost? Is there a difference between recipes of compost? Does the difference create better life in our soil and ecosystems? But how would you determine those differences? What if there was a way to make a determination using a microscope? Well, today we're going to answer these questions. Welcome to the channel. I'm Kay the Guy. So here's our first ingredient to our compost pile, and this is our carbon, which is made up of quarter inch wood chips. Now we use the F-Cut Mini wood chipper in order to chip these down. This was the accumulation of six different trees on our property, which included curly willow, globe willow, weeping willow, elm tree, apple trees, and some aspen trees as well. Now I did a previous review from the F-Cut Mini on how well it chipped the wood chips for our piles. Um, it's been a great asset to our property here and I have nothing bad to say about that machine. I would definitely recommend it if you're making wood chips for your compost pile. Now, the mixture of all these trees is homogenous. So what I did was I mixed everything together with the pitchfork to make sure that it was all equally mixed together. Last night, what I did on the pile was I added water to the pile and kept turning the pile until I could see no more dry spots throughout the majority of the wood chips. I added enough water so that when I squeezed the wood chips, I'd get a few drops out of my hand, which we would consider somewhere between about 60 to maybe 70% moisture level in this wood chip pile. The reason why I did that is I didn't want to add too much water, too much moisture to the manure component or to the green component, which would have matted everything together. So I decided to do the moisture content on the wood chip pile because it was the easiest to break up, but still hold all that moisture inside of it. Now our wood chips are the fungal foods to our pile and they help build structure to the pile's aggregates. Now the green material, which is our cut grass, what this is going to do for our pile mainly is help maintain temperatures as being the nitrogen portion of our compost pile. So this is going to keep temperatures moving and continually high throughout that entire thermophilic process. So the last component here, which is one of the most important, is the high nitrogen portion, which is a mixture of cow and horse manure we got from our neighboring property. Now, what this is going to do, this is going to really get the party started. It's what Dr. Elaine considers or what she calls party food. And the reason why that is is because the beneficial microorganisms in the system are going to immediately get stimulated for growth by this manure pile here, which was originally large pieces of cow and horse that we uh, chopped down into a little bit more of a homogenous uh, type pile that is not going to clump together so much. So we kind of chopped it down to make it a little bit more granule so that when it gets into the pile that it's mixed and distributed evenly. So here you can see that I'm assembling this compost pile, adding my 60% wood chips, 10% manure, and 30% grass clippings. As I prepare the batch on the weed barrier sheet, I make sure to wet the batch with approximately 50% moisture. So why 50% moisture? Well this was the ideal percentage researched at the soil food web to create enough stimulation in the compost pile without going anaerobic while starting the reproductive process of propagating new bacteria life like cocci and bacilli and fungal strains like acomycetes and basidiomycetes within the pile. So in the past few years, microbes and biology have become a hot topic in organic growing. But Dr. Elaine has been studying and perfecting this process over the last four decades, using data and a microscope to verify the findings from various trials of hot composting. This has led an entire industry to forming ways to promote life in soil instead of destroying it or ignoring it. And actually none of this smells. Everything actually has no smell. The manure, the grass, 
everything smells very earthy right now, which is also another good sign you want to look out for. Now that our pile is finished assembly, we set our thermometers in place to monitor temperatures in order to maintain the proper ranges to allow the beneficial organisms to flourish and the detrimental ones to be outcompeted. So why do we need heat? Heat accumulation is the byproduct of mass reproduction of fungal and bacterial biomass. With the proper heat, we are eliminating the pathogens, pests, and disease, and also killing any unwanted seeds. So by creating a fast thermophilic pile, we are killing potential hazards within the compost while growing the beneficial microorganisms that will stimulate nutrient cycling and outcompete the anaerobic and potentially plant hazardous species. Which brings us to the big question. How can the reproduction of bacteria and fungi in our compost piles save the planet? Let me explain. First, bacteria is everywhere and these single-celled organisms are food for other predatory organisms like protozoa and nematodes. Amazingly, bacteria can reproduce and split into another in as little as 20 minutes in the right conditions. It takes one million bacterial reproduction to increase temperatures by one degree. So if our pile is increasing from ambient temperatures to 150 degrees Fahrenheit, that would be the reproduction of millions of bacteria in just a couple of days. So how can the reproduction of bacteria and fungi save the planet? Well, the issue is with carbon emissions and greenhouse gases released into the atmosphere. So what kind of organisms hold the most carbon? Trees, large carbon capturing trees. But how do we as earth caretakers grow more trees? We grow and cultivate more fungi. Fungi can reproduce an additional new tip cell in its network every three hours. Fungi also hold 80% of carbon in its body structure as opposed to bacteria that can only hold 20% of carbon. So by mastering the cultivation process of beneficial organisms, we can grow more carbon gathering organic machines, grow our own foods, and create ecosystems that will reverse the growing problem of carbon creation and turn it around to carbon sequestration. As you can see, it's pretty cold, pretty windy. There's a storm coming in, so we're trying to hurry. But anyway, right now, I'm not getting any smell out of there. I'm not getting any ammonia, which means my ammonium is staying intact as NH4 within my pile, which is the kind of nitrogen that I want my plants to have in order to produce the proper results that they will use in order to grow properly.
Now that our pile has started to cool, it's time to take some samples and see what kind of biology we have cultivated. It's an amazing thing to think about, but we are now looking at one single drop of solution from one gram of that compost sample. These worm-looking creatures are nematodes. They are one of mostly four groups of nematodes in soil. Bacterial feeders, root feeders, predatory, and omnivorous. These microscopic worms are working non-stop feeding and wasting plant-available nutrients all around your plant's roots. Now these creatures are classified in the different groups by their internal characteristics. This one, for example, has lots of small bacteria all within its body, and towards the front, you can see the mouth and its pumping structures. The wide mouth opening and the cylindrical shape of the front tells me this is a bacterial feeding nematode, or a good guy. Now with biological cultivation, there are organisms that can be signs of detrimental anaerobic conditions, conditions that could be dangerously low in pH, like these ciliates. These fast moving creatures, which are pretty fun to chase around a microscope slide, yet too many of them in your fields can be the first sign that the biology is going in the wrong direction. Now these egg-shaped smaller creatures are testate amoeba. These slow-shelled protozoa reach with their thin tentacles and latch onto aggregates, also cycling nutrients creating more plant-available nutrition. This is the main reason composting can change the course of plant growth. Restoring the smallest creatures in your growing environment can create the biggest change. So what is biologically complete compost? It's compost that we're specifically tailoring to create the kind of species of microbes that are gonna promote the best growth in our plants by cycling nutrients of the predator-prey community within the soil. And what that's going to do is that's gonna give our plants the system of workers within the soil that the plants are gonna give them sugars to promote more cycling of soluble nutrients, plant available nutrients in the soil to not only help the plant, but the plant still helps that microbe community within the soil. So the term biologically complete we're referring to is having all of the predator prey species within the soil that creates that nutrient cycling to grow the plants that we want to grow better, creating healthier plants, bigger yields, and a healthier community in those environments. And those of you that may be thinking that you want to learn these kinds of methodologies to making compost to identification of soil microbes, I encourage you to check the link below in the description and take a look at the Soil Food Web School for yourself. Comment below if you have any questions. Subscribe so you don't miss any of our new videos. Thanks guys for watching and we'll see you in the next one.